Let me ask you about the operating environment now, specifically, uh, for instance, BFSI and you know, the problem that your peers are also facing within that particular segment, insurance being one of them, it's a concern for TCS, but you're not particularly perturbed about the slowdown that you're seeing in insurance. Not at all. Not at all. I How think, come? I think, I mean, banks have uh, some structural challenges that they're dealing with, but again, by doing it in the right way, by approaching this in the right way, uh, we can in fact turn that into a huge advantage mm -hmm. for us. Um, by coming up with the right services and the right product offerings mm. and so forth. Uh, when you get on the wrong side of it every once in a while because of a large dependency or something and uh, there has to be a ramp down or something of that mm. sort, then of course you, the business suffers. Mm. But generally my sense is that uh, even in the, some of the most challenged banks, mm. we have opportunities for, for great growth and mm. we are actually seeing that, mm. many of our clients. And then in insurance companies, actually the entire insurance industry is again going through a massive transformation through mm. because of digital. But it comes down to, actually let me show you something. Mm. Uh, it comes down to the uh, uh, our ability to deliver for their consumers a great new experience in this digital time. And sometimes that involves uh, completely rethinking. Mm. Maybe if you can walk here, I'll, I'll show you this. So here is an example of something mm. that we put together for a massive insurance company mm. where they were asking us to think about the uh, claims processing experience mm. and our team worked on this project, Shavana and April mm. and the team. Uh, and they said, why is there even a claims process mm. in a connected time? Just like we can connect the plants, why can't we connect people mm. to the insurance company? So it is not that you learn about what happened to me when I file a claim, mm. but you learn about me every day mm. on a constant basis. Mm. And we can completely reimagine the mm. engagement that a consumer has. I and mean, this particular company has 40 million consumers. Mm. And uh, I hope we didn't get the... Get the, <laughs> the uh, so, if we could offer a great experience for yeah. these 40 million consumers yeah. through, through digital mm. or dramatically simplify their landscape, mm. then, so my point is that I don't see an issue. In fact, we have just done two um, uh, big deals with insurance companies. Mm. Uh, so, I don't see a structural issue in insurance. Okay. So, which are the verticals that you're most excited about? I know that you believe that consulting is the tip of the spear as far as interest yes. is concerned. Which are the verticals that you're most confident and excited about going into the future? I am... Uh, uh, financials, uh, generally the financial industry, just because the opportunities there are so huge, including insurance, uh, is one that I'm quite uh, excited about. I think retail is going through a great transformation. Mm -hmm. I think all retailers are have either come out of it or are about to come out of this period of kind of valley of depression or mm. whatever we mm. can call it, that mm. they have realized that digital mm. is a tremendous opportunity, mm. that in fact this idea that, that there's only digital retail is complete nonsense mm. because everybody has warehouses and except sure. for music and yeah. digitized content, mm. there is still a physical value chain mm. uh, that has to be served and optimized and so mm. on. So there are great opportunities in retail and in particular virtual reality and these richer experiences. Mm. I mentioned uh, investments. We have in this company called Nova, mm. uh, which is a spin out from DreamWorks. Yeah. And, you know, DreamWorks just uh, was purchased by yeah. Comcast. Yeah. But Nova is out of that, and Jeffrey um, is going to continue to run Nova. Mm. And they will focus on bringing this animation technology to reimagine the experience of retailers mm. and so forth. Mm. So we are really, we were the first investor in this, mm. uh, in this venture. Mm. Um, so I think retail is a great uh, one. Uh, another huge one is manufacturing. Mm. The entire manufacturing world is dying for ways to connect the products that are out there in mm. the field being repaired and so on. The chillers, the, the turbines, the uh, locomotives and airplane engines mm. and all these things. Mm. We are working with a ton of these. We just did a partnership mm. with Akatech in Industry 4 in Germany mm. and uh, we were at the Hanover Fair. Uh, so I think manufacturing is another one that I am uh, particularly excited about. Mm. So. In general, all of them, uh, I think that I keep being hopeful that soon, hopefully in our lifetime, mm. we will see a great transformation in healthcare. Mm. That is still something that is uh, um, a little bit further out. Mm. You know, um, I was just talking to some of the my friends here from the Valley yesterday about investing more in healthcare mm. and really fundamental breakthroughs and uh, I wish there was more happening there. Mm. Uh, I wish there was more in the public sector, mm. that there was more ease of business. But you know, but retail, manufacturing, mm. financial services, mm. 
um, I'm really excited about those. So since you talked about the public sector, I can't not but ask you about what's happening as far as the MCA 21 contract oh is concerned. Uh, you know, we've got Amitabh Khan going public on Twitter saying that you're responsible for the debacle of MCA 21 and all no, kinds I, of I action will be initiated. Uh, how would you respond to that? Uh, I don't know why Mr. Khan said that. Uh, I don't understand. Uh, the, uh, I have looked at this project myself. Uh, Praveen looks at it on a daily basis. and um, It is an incredibly complex project. We actually had a statement from the Secretary himself that uh, um, you know things were going well under, mm. given where we were at. It is a very large scale, very complex project which we inherited in a quite a messy situation that mm. was there before. and. Uh, there was, there is a lot of uh, dependency on these new systems to the underlying data sources and things like that. So a lot of the, for example, the, the cases that fall through the cracks and mm. so forth are because the, the the interfaces and the structure for those were just not there originally mm. and so on. So when I see the reports from all our team and mm. so forth, they suggest to us that we are well within the, mm. the parameters that were identified. That is what I see. Mm. And, uh, but have you heard from the government? There's been talks of some sort of action being initiated against you? Have you heard at all from the no, government no, on no. this front? I imagine that if there was such a thing, then we would know. But mm. uh, uh, we have our best people working on that problem. And uh, again, I'm not. Uh, there are obviously there are there are issues that have got people extremely frustrated. But um, uh, nothing, no worse than what was expected or. Um, uh, or, or the expectation that was set certainly mm. with us, and uh, so my sense is that uh, uh, this will this will stabilize. You've just reported your numbers, so we have a sense of uh, what the outlook looks like. But if I were to ask you today on your dashboard, what would you say are the key challenges that you're concerned about, most worried about, both? as far as your own internal um, uh, organization is concerned and also as far as the macros in the industry? The scaling of the new services, so so far it has been through a top-down push with this uh, large scale scale-up of the innovation services, uh, the Aikido, Mana, uh, you know, Skava, Panaya, these kinds of services to bring those to a large number of clients and the underlying cultural uh, operational shift that that means is the big one, mm. number one. Mm. Number two is the uh, renewal through automation of the existing business because that has to continue to grow as well. Yeah. And that is where the big, big investments are. Uh, so the ongoing renewal through automation of mm. the existing business through mm. zero distance and automation mm. of the main service, mm. that's where again MANA mm. is very, very big for us. Mm. Uh, and then doing so with the cost because like we discussed earlier, the automation is not going to be enough mm. in the near future, in the next two, three, four quarters. Mm. It will mm. be the mechanism for margin improvement in the, uh, in the mid to long term. Mm. But in the here and now, automation needs to be supplemented with greater operational efficiency, mm. helping to do a, a purposeful reshaping of our costs, mm. how we have articulated it mm. inside. That is a huge uh, priority. So those are the top three on my mind. Well, Vishal, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for showing us around yes. the Infosys campus here in uh, in the Bay Area. And thank you very much for your time. We wish Absolutely. you all the best thank for 2020 so and for 2016 as well. But thanks very much, as always, for joining us thank here on you, CNBC uh, TV 18. Thanks, Irene. And please do get some Mexican food. Today. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, on that note, it is time for us to wrap up here this special conversation with Vishal Sikha coming to you from the Infosys headquarters in the Valley. From all of us, goodbye. Thanks for watching.